So you played wide receiver at Alabama a little bit. Um, kind of talk about some of the guys that you've seen, you know, come from Alabama that have got drafted. Obviously, Calvin Ridley got drafted a couple of years ago. I'm just going to throw in some tight ends, some pass catchers, I guess. We could talk about um, Irv Smith, O.J. Howard. They have great speed. Um, you know, we talked about Henry Ruggs and Jerry Judy. You talked about Judy's, you know, preparation. And then you got you got guys like Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle who didn't even come out this year. I think that they're probably going to be first-round picks. Out of all the Alabama pass catchers or wide receivers or tight ends that you've had a chance to look at, which one kind of stood out to you the most as far as their work ethic, you know, their habits, you know, their character, just making plays on the field, you know, what, what are they like in the locker room? Just what is, what's one guy that you stood out and said, okay, that, that you singled out, I should say, and said, okay, that guy's a little bit different? Yeah, um, it, it's a tough question because, you know, most Putting you on the spot. There would, there would be a guy who's definitely like that. But in Alabama, I mean, it's just tough because every single guy has outstanding athletic ability when you're playing at the top notch like that. Um, I mean, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to pick one cause that's kind of too hard. Like just thinking about it, but I'll talk about a cool, you know, Ridley, uh, Calvin Ridley and Jerry Judy in my mind are pretty similar play style. Uh, and it was cool because they were very good friends, you know, and, and Judy was always trying to mimic Calvin, you know, whatever Calvin was doing, Judy was trying to do the same thing. Uh, and they both worked their tails off, and just kind of have that quick and just mobile, you know, ability. Uh, I would say Jerry, you know, I guess, you know, stood out in one way through the whole group because of the fact that I've told someone he's kind of like a Michael Jordan in a sense in the sport of football where he catches the ball, you don't know what he's going to do, you know, and it's not saying he might juke, he might step on you, you don't know what the guy's going to do. He might create a move that you've never seen before. Um, and, and I think that's what made him stand out the most to me is that he was able to literally slow down the game and come up with moves that other people are probably going to mimic for years to come. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, as far as defense goes, you know, Alabama's had some good defensive backs come out. You know, we talked about Trevon Diggs a little bit. What's a defensive back that you maybe faced in practice that you said, man, this guy is really good and he might be flying under the radar, you know, someone that you know. Is it someone that's at Alabama right now? You know, who's a defensive back at Bama that really stood out to you? Um, I mean, if we're talking about over my whole career. Um, we can go that route. Was, yeah, if, if we're talking about my whole career, like you said, I've, I've been able to go against some of the best. Uh, I would say the guy that stood out to me the most, though, was Nick the Fitzpatrick. Um, you know, he just he was at the Dolphins, got traded to the Steelers. Uh, there's countless times where I can remember after practice he would grab me. You know, one week going into Clemson week, um, he he said, "Mac, you, you stay after practice." And I'm like, "Dude, like we've been practicing every day. You have to be ready for the game. You have to be fresh." I didn't say this to him, but in my head, I'm <laughs> thinking this. I'm like, "You think you're crazy? Like you just have this practice, and you're about to have to go do this or that. Like, but you want to get in more." And he's like, "Dude, you got me on that. You know." whatever you're doing on that route. And he's like, I want to learn that. So we would do it over and over again. No one else out there on the practice field. Uh, and he would get me to practice it with him. Uh, and, and I was sitting there and I, you know, I'm not a star or anything like he is. Um, but the fact that he wouldn't stay after practice and work like that and just seeing him have a good relationship with coach Saban, uh, and being at the right place at the right time in the locker room, just a, a really faithful guy, you know, who's always setting a good example for others and leading with, you know, the way he does things. He stuck out to me. He's a very, very impressive person. Um, and, you know, shows why he's very successful. Who would you say is the funniest teammate that you've come across? Is is it Quentin Williams? I'm going to take a guess. Is it Quentin? Ooh, that's tough. Um, there's a couple of them up there. I, you know, Q, Q is, is definitely one of the funnier ones. Uh, you got Christian Barmore, who's still there, who's just hysterical. Um, Brandon Turnage. Uh, it's hilarious. Phil Mathis, um, gosh, Deontay Brown. There's a, a lot of character in that locker room. Um, there's not one in particular I could say is, is funnier than the others, but there was. There's a lot of guys who are pretty humorous in the locker room. Is it fair to say that Henry Ruggs is the fastest player that you've seen at Alabama? There's been a lot of fast players, but I think that he's different. Is he the fastest? 
Yes, I, I would say so. I'd say if anyone could compete with him, it'd be Waddle or Tony Brown. I would have loved to see Tony go against him just because Tony ran track and was so successful um, in track. Uh, but Tony Brown was pretty dang quick. Um, but I've seen Ruggs and Waddle race, and it's so much fun to watch. You know, Ruggs wins, but it, it's a super close race. Uh, and, yeah, Ruggs is probably the fastest guy I've ever played with. Got it, got it. Now, I'm going to kind of transition to the school of the year at that you're going to be going to next, which is Vanderbilt. But really quickly, do you still believe that Alabama is the premium program in college football? Obviously, you know, Clemson has knocked, knocked Alabama off the last couple of years. Um, you know, Georgia's up there. Ohio State's up there. You know, what would you say to people that think that Alabama has fallen off and that they're maybe not the best program anymore? Do you still believe Alabama is the cream crop of college football? Yes, uh, I would say that Alabama is the standard uh, of college football, of excellence in college football. And it's not just because of, you know, you look at it long term, the amount of national championships, uh, just the amount of NFL players that come out of there, uh, everything. I would say that Alabama is still, you know, the standard of college football. Um, and it's a, it's a tribute not just to the guys on the field, but the staff they have there, uh, Coach Saban. And just like every little person working underneath them, whether it's a nutritionist or a chef, you know, every person in that building is the best at what they do in a sense. Um, and so I still think, yeah, they, they're up there for sure. As far as really quickly, you know, the university itself, you know, what did the university do for you? What did you actually study at Alabama? Yeah, so I, I studied for the most of my time. Uh, communic I was in the communication school and studied public relations. Uh, but for the last semester, I uh, transferred over to interdisciplinary studies just so I'd be able to graduate uh, early in December. Um, and the school as a whole is an incredible place. Uh, you know, so many great people and teachers overexceeded my expectations. They had teachers in there that really cared about their students, uh, and, you know, wanted their students to really learn and be successful. Um, and it, it was just a family, and it's a great family atmosphere. And I'll always, you know, have a place for my uh, Alabama in my heart. I just love that school. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. And I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows, or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.